everybody. Let's talk the stock market this week. We got a lot of potential big movers this week. We have a huge gap up in the futures market right now, which I'm loving every second of because I've been scaling into that TQQQ, like I've been saying. I think it's the best opportunity to the market. Triple leverages. We may be going into a recession, but it doesn't matter to me because I would just continually scale in. I'm not full position right now, and neither should anybody else be. I'm just getting my feet wet into this investment for not the long term, like everybody keeps trolling about in the comments, but for the medium term because I think it could be a really great trade um, a couple months down the road. So scale it in, taking advantage of the opportunity and the dips in the market. So I'm looking at the SP 500 right now. And I hate to say this because on the weekly chart, it looks like we're going down a lot further. There's a lot more, there's a lot of uh, lines on this because I've been drawing and doing a lot of charting lately. But I think that once we tap this 360 mark, we could see 350 and then potentially if any more bad news comes out, could see this 340 pre pandemic level which would be absolutely nuts because of how much of a recovery we had during COVID. But with that being said, let's take a look and keep this short and simple to the brief point. We have a huge gap up to 371.50 on the daily chart. So we're, we're above this mark right around this area. And I wouldn't be surprised if we tap to fill this gap around that 370. Um, even this 365, we could fill this gap all the way back down to 366, 365. So be careful at open, especially if it doesn't continually you know, fall off or anything like that, we could see a nice little gap down pre-market. So I will be paying attention to that right at open to see if we fall or if we have some strength and we, sh and we short squeeze. Because when you're looking at the five minute chart, we may be able to see some room up to 374, all the way up to 377. But most likely when things gap up like this, we see the opposite side happen. So I'll be paying attention to the sell off at the beginning of the day if we gap up this nicely over the weekend. So S&P 500, Watch the, for the gap down, fill it back down to that 366 or maybe around that 370 range. But um, like I said, just make sure you are paying attention to the levels to see where it opens up tomorrow morning at 930. Same thing with the QQQ. Obviously, it's gapping up. The market moves together. But I'm looking at this daily chart right now, and I'm starting to really like where text, the tech sector is starting to level off. I know they're correlated, and it's going to be even worse if we enter into a recession. The 2 and 10-year yields are obviously starting to get close to inverting, and that's not a telltale sign that there's gonna be a recession, but everything else is lining up to be, we're going into a recession. So jobless claims this week are gonna tell us a lot, and if people are starting to get laid off, that is the last step to a recession. So be careful of that, but I am liking the sideways movement in the s and or in the QQQ. We're gapping up to this 275. If we can break this 280 mark, or even this 284 mark, this is gonna run right back up to this 288, 289 to fill this little gap in between here. So. We did reject this gap. Next time we test it, we're most likely going to go through it, pending the news and if there's any crazy recession talks. So QQQ and SPY be on a very big lookout for tomorrow. I'm expecting initial drop down and open, but obviously you can't go into the market every day determining a direction before it actually happens. So that's those are two big things on my watch list. I'm also looking at Tesla here because there's a nice little double bounce. It looks like an inverse cup and handle down here. Um, on the daily chart, and a lot of people are calling for much lower. So if it can break below the 621 support line, it's gonna head down to 600 pretty quickly. And on the inverse side, if we can look around the 670, 675, I wouldn't be surprised to see it back at 700 in no time. So Tesla's a big mover. Hopefully it happens closer to the end of the week because the contracts are a lot cheaper, so a lot more people can play them, and there'll be more volume when they're cheaper. So I'm gonna look at this inverse cup. If it breaks below the 620, I'll take some $600 puts, hopefully closer to Thursday or Friday. Um, and then of course, 675 break, I'll take the $700 jump. So around a 20, $25 discrepancy, both upside and downside, just pay attention to that because this does look bearish, but if it does just double bounce and keep going, then it was a double bounce failed breakout on this inverse cup. So just keep that on watch. Tesla's a really good one, especially near the end of the week. Spy, obviously I keep saying it's all you need, but I like to play Tesla premium sometimes. Um, and then rest in peace to Amazon Fridays, but it does look like it's also forming that inverse cup and handle. But if it breaks this 110 mark, then it looks like it's gonna reject that inverse cup. But keep in mind, this 101.26 seems to be a nice little support line. So if it breaks below this and heads lower, that's probably gonna head quite a bit lower, maybe down to 90, 93, 95. But these contracts are a lot cheaper now because Amazon split. So. Like I said, rest in peace to Amazon Fridays, but Tesla is still alive and well. And of course you have the spy and QQQ. So hope that helps you out. Hopes that shows you some levels and um, the market is really bloody and it's really weird out there because there's so many people calling for recession. We're really lined up that way in the economy. 
but we may or may not be priced in with how aggressive the Federal Reserve is being. So a lot more assets to be sold off here, but how much worse could it possibly get for some of these stocks before somebody comes in and is like, okay, we need to take advantage of how cheap these prices are. So we'll see. We're going to keep monitoring it. It's going to be, it's a day traders market out there. So just be careful, scale into some long-term investments on some of these cheaps and with companies you believe in. Um, other than that, I'm going to keep doing my due diligence and my analysis on some of these. So hopefully some of these levels for the week in terms of day trading are helping you generate some cash for those long-term investments. So that's about all I got for now. SPY, QQQ, Amazon RIP, but could be potential. And then Tesla, of course, on that double bottom potential breakdown or bounce. So 620, big bounce level or big drop down level. So keep those on watch. Hope that helped. And let's make some money.